Hello bitches! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video about the top five drawing mistakes I see some more beginner artists make. Like, I still make these mistakes to this day, some professional artists still make these mistakes to this day. You know, as time goes on, you just make less of these mistakes, but it's not like you will never make these mistakes again, because nobody is perfect. Okay, but seriously, these top five drawing mistakes aren't supposed to make you scared or fearful of drawing again. It's more of something to just implant in your brain so that you're just aware of it the next time and I feel like the more conscious you are of it, you're going to start acting upon it next time to follow what tips I'm about to say. So it's not so much of like, oh shit, I better not make this mistake again. It's more of just like, oh, here's just something to keep in mind and it's okay to make mistakes. Everybody has those days. Everybody knows what, what I'm talking about. So most of these tips are probably things you might have already heard through someone else or through an online source. But you know, the way I like to think about things is that every person needs to have a very specific way of things being told to them in order to understand it. So hopefully this video can reach out to those of you who weren't able to understand these tips through someone else and need it to be more explained in the way that I'm about to explain it. So the first type of mistake that I see a lot of artists make when they're drawing people, usually, is they forget to put the form or the skeletal structure inside before drawing the outlines and silhouette. And everyone makes this mistake and I feel like a lot of people tend to fall into this trap due to the fact that they're very glued to achieving a style rather than drawing things correctly. I'm a victim to it. You might be a victim to it. There are a lot of artists out there who make this mistake and that's completely normal because at the end of the day, we all want our own voice. But you know, sometimes the way you find your voice is through the way you approach foundational skills. And what I mean by that is you might see these in a lot of how to draw art books or your art class has told you these things, but normally people would draw a sphere, a rectangle, cylinders inside before drawing the outlines and the line art to a figure. And the reason why people do this is because they're understanding the structure of the person. If you really want to get that deep into it, you can take an anatomy class or you can just take life drawing classes and learn how to draw people through gestures. There are a lot of ways to approach understanding form, but the most basic thing you can do for yourself to prevent having these lopsided things is to just remember the basic shapes. For example, your head is usually going to be a circle on top because heads are round, unless if you're a square shaped head, follow the shape that is underneath the skin. You wanna follow that little fucking shape beneath all the flesh. You just want to make sure that when you're outlining the top of your head or the hair to the character or figure, there's a level of consistency between the sphere inside the head and the outline that you're making because usually there's a lack of form when you don't follow the sphere shape inside or whatever shape it is inside that the head is. The lopsidedness normally is due to the fact that you're not following the shape inside. So to save yourself from making this mistake again in the future whenever you start roughing out a sketch to just keep in mind to draw the basic shapes prior to drawing the whole detailed outlines and whatnot. But I totally understand where this mistake comes from and in order to learn from your mistakes you gotta make them first. So the second most common mistake I see people make in their drawings is when they lack confidence in their lines and I pretty much explained this in a previous video with my top four art tools that I use. Check that out if you're ever interested in hearing me talk more about line confidence. But basically, what I notice is that when a lot of artists start off with drawing, they make more rough, sketchy marks because they're trying to feel out the line or really make sure they're getting the line right. And the way they do that is by making these very short, small strokes that end up kind of looking like fur or hair, so you make someone's arm look hairy or furry, and, but if that's what you want to do, like, go for it, bitch. But anyway, the point of this is, is that if you do not want to be making furry arms, you want to try to make more confident lines. And by confident lines, I don't mean you need to just make a single stroke every time. Like, it's not like a one-time shot every time you draw this 
line for an arm, body, head. You don't need to try to achieve it by making one single line all the time. What I simply mean by line confidence is the way that you draw out your strokes is enough to define that part of the silhouette or that part of the shape. You don't need to make 10 million lines just to define it because you're confident enough to minimize the amount of lines you're using to define something in your drawing. One way you can practice your line confidence better is by drawing with pen more because what you're going to do with a pen is that you're forced to just see your mistakes. A lot of the times when you make drawings with pen, you can't really fix it unless if you have an erasable pen or if you have whiteout. And sometimes it's better to face the reality of how you are drawing by habit and pen forces you to just see the truth because you can't go back and change time. But you know, what you can do is learn for the future. So keep a sketchbook of just ugly ass drawings. This could be like your diary, but in drawing form and you just vent out all your ugly drawings. The point ultimately is, is that by drawing with pen, you're kind of just accepting the types of strokes you make. But the more mistakes you make with your pen strokes, the more you're going to learn what types of strokes are not working for you. The only way to really get those bad stroke habits out of you is by just continuously doing it until you just have that brain to hand connection that, you know, I'm not gonna make that fucking line that goes 45 degrees to the left no more. That just is not working for me. Like one day your brain and hand will just have this bond like you've never had before and they will just understand what it is you're trying to say through less lines. So the third drawing mistake that I see a lot of artists make when they're approaching a whole piece or a whole body of a figure figure is that they focus too much on one area and they kind of just forget about the rest. Like sometimes I see drawings that feel like, ooh, the head is so complete and beautiful, but for some reason the whole body is just like, what the fuck happened? And a lot of the times I notice people feel like, oh, I started off with the head. Well, I can't move on to the rest of the body until I finish the whole head. Well, guess what? I normally find that the best way to approach having a consistently finished drawing, whether if it's a sketch painting or just a line drawing, is by having each part of your drawing equally finished. Like if you're going to leave the head super rough sketched out, it's better to just honestly have the rest of your drawing rough sketched out because it at least adds clarity to the point that hey this is just a rough sketch but when you have like a head that's super completed and super refined but the rest of your drawing is just like super sketchy super rough and unclear it just kind of says to me that you really cared so much about making this head look absolutely perfect, but you really just didn't give a fucking shit about the rest of this drawing. And I totally get it. When I was little, I had my favorite parts of drawings to do and I had my least favorite parts of drawings to do, but then eventually I realized that hey, if I want to make a drawing look good in general, I gotta learn to draw the other parts too. And sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes it's not about whether if you just didn't like drawing the rest of the drawing. Sometimes it's more of you just did not have the knowledge for the rest of the drawing to make and you only really learn how to draw heads so far. And again, there is nothing wrong with just learning and making mistakes and having that perfect head but then that shitty body. It's just, you know, a chapter in your life. This is the chapter in your life where you didn't understand how to draw bodies but you're going to fucking change that from this point on. So I have two tips to fix this type of mistake and the first one is to just simply learn how to draw bodies, draw the rest of the drawing or whatever part of the drawing that you find yourself avoiding the most to just learn it, approach it, spend a week just diving right into that section only. And the second tip I have for this type of mistake is kind of more from a completion point of view. I would suggest for you to just do a rough sketch of the whole thing before you even move on to any sort of rendering, line arting, coloring, whatever. It's like creating a blueprint for yourself or creating a guideline for yourself by creating a rough sketch and then the line art and then the coloring and whatnot. And not so much of, ooh, rough sketch of the head, line art of the head, coloring the head. All right, now rough sketch the body. Let's line art the body. Let's color the body. You know, some people might learn from that way. And if you learned from that way, that is awesome. Good for you. But what I tend to notice happens when people approach things in that way is that 
they will then hit a roadblock within the document of the drawing. And if you're drawing traditionally, well, good luck because there's no transform tool or undo button out there. But if you are drawing digitally, you normally have the saving grace of the tool to help you reposition your drawing. But if you are drawing traditionally, if you don't at least map out the entire sketch of the drawing first, you're gonna find yourself realizing that you don't got enough room now to draw the arm or you don't got enough room now to draw the thing you wanted to draw before. So that's why, again, I would suggest for you to do an overall sketch of everything, make everything consistently at the same level before moving on to the next step of the rendering process. So the fourth mistake that I see a lot of artists make, and, and I actually feel like this one is harder to achieve from the rest of the ones I just mentioned because this can be more subjective and is really in the eye of the beholder because for me this is how I perceive things. But a lot of the times I find people do very stiff drawings where I feel like the character is just like... And what I mean by that is I find the character just seems very uncomfortable in the situation or they just draw the characters in a way that is not a natural position that normal humans would rest in. And this tends to be more apparent in amateur artists drawing skills, but if you are thinking about getting into animation, illustration, cartooning, things that might involve human figures, illustration, cartoons, you're still kind of evoking clarity in someone's gesture and it might be an emotional thing, it might just be like a body language thing that you're trying to portray in the drawing. And as of now, the easiest piece of advice I have to fix this type of mistake is to just really avoid anything that might seem close to a 90 degree angle, especially when it comes to the shoulders, the arms, or the legs. Like, nobody fucking walks around like this. But if they do, I'm pretty sure they're gonna fucking lose blood flow at some point because it's not comfortable. Normally, when people are at rest, their shoulders are just slightly a little bit more down. Like, no one's shoulders really are like this unless if they're nervous or anxious. Another thing that you can do is sometimes I find drawings to be too even, too flat in a way that it's not intentional and that can sometimes stiffen up a drawing, especially if you just see a drawing of a character just like where they're just staring straight right at you and they're completely like even everywhere. And sometimes this can be intentional, but if it is intentional, normally you can tell. So a way that you can loosen the drawing up is to have different parts of the body like just facing different angles or tilted at different angles because normally that's what people are like when they are existing in real life. By creating more loosened figures or drawings, it's also a way of making more life in that drawing. It feels more organic. It feels real because in real life, nobody is perfect. I gotta work it again and again till I get it right. That is the whole concept of this video. I am so happy we have come full circle. And the fifth mistake that I see a lot of people do when they're drawing or not really when they're drawing, it's more when I see everything that they draw is when I notice that some people are only capable of drawing one thing. But this is not to be mistaken with people who choose to draw only one thing, but then behind the scenes they're like drawing a shit ton of other stuff. Because sometimes people want to just have a specific brand to their work, they just want to be that person who has a page of this type of drawing. But in reality, they actually practice a lot in their sketchbook and do other types of drawings. The type of person I'm talking about is someone who is just glued to one style of drawing. It's not even like being good at drawing either. It's just you only want to draw the same thing of one thing all the damn time and you never want to do anything else because this is your comfort zone. This is the only thing that you feel confident in drawing and you're not really exploring other fields. But the truth is, is that you're eventually going to have to broaden your horizons to some degree if this is a career you want to pursue. It is best to have a more diverse perspective on things. And normally the hardest part of that is to just 
get yourself to accept the fact and just do it. A lot of people might just stay stubborn and be like, I don't like drawing this. I cannot get myself to draw this because I just don't like it. Well, with that attitude, you're most likely going to be limiting your future opportunities. And that's not to shun upon those who are only capable of one style. It's just good to have experience in multiple things in life, just like people who always just stay in one place. Sometimes you gotta get out and move about and explore other places, other people, and get to know about other things to just broaden your horizons. Anyway, I hope this video kind of just pointed out some of the things that you might be making mistakes in in your own art or just help give you a little refresher and things that needed a refresher on. The point of this video, again, is to not make you fearful of laying that line down on a piece of paper. The point is to kind of just keep these in mind. That's why I'm only doing five, so you only gotta keep in mind five of them and not 20 of them, because that's a lot to remember. But these five, keep it in mind when you're drawing. It will definitely help you progress and become a better artist because these five tips are actually the five top mistakes I always made when I was drawing and I still make some of them today but also who gives a fuck like <laughs> at the end of the day a drawing is a drawing it's not a big deal it's not a life or death situation so if anything think of how much of a blessing it is to have these top five drawing mistakes be a problem in your life Thanks for watching this video. I hope y'all learn a thing or two from it and I'll see y'all in the next one. So see y'all later and stay ho some bitches.